Well I'm set up here now to do another little watercolour for you. I'm only going to need three of my brushes. I'm going to use the oval mop and a couple of small round brushes. Got my photographs ready to work from, my paints ready just to dampen and I'll put these brushes away now. Just soften them down, give them a little bit of time to get some water on because they've gone hard by now. We are, just leave those a few minutes to get ready. Now I'm going to start with these lilies, get all of them painted, then work my way down through the leaves, gradually down to the koi carp here and finish up with the carp and the water. I'll zoom into one of these in a moment, but first of all we've got to look at the cools and warms of these because there's a very delicate, almost like blue, into um, the petals gradually going through to the warmer colours. So I'm going to use uh, a mop first of all just to do the background colours, the creams and the background colours. A little bit of aureole in yellow. I can afford just to mix on the edge of my paper there. I want it very thick, I want a very, very thin. Thin, thin coat, just to uh, get a bit of cream into the leaves at first. A bit of cream into these leaves. So this is a, a wash which we're going to use as a glaze. I'm going to come back when it's dry and um, just gently work my very pale blues and then my warms gradually over that. So first of all a little bit of warmth just to give a very light cream, almost to white. Right, now I want to come back to my cools, and this time I'm going to take a little bit of this beautiful turquoise that I've got. I've been using Cerulean up until now, but I do like this turquoise, and we're going to just bring that into a little bit of the turquoise, just being brought in when it's just damp, so it's almost wet into wet, into here, in these cool shaded areas of the petals. Because even though they're very light, we've taught them to have some form, just make sure that I keep it very light in those places. I'm going to lift a little bit of paint off the edges of those, just make them lighter again. And we'll let those dry off a bit. Now let's zoom in on to one of these that we'll concentrate on. Things are drying very quickly today because it's a very hot day and this conservatory is also very hot. Changing down now to a little round brush. My number five, and uh, I'm going to start laying in some of the pinks. I'm going to go for my cobalt violet this time. It's a beautiful light colour. It's a colour that we cannot mix, so you know many of these colours you've got to buy them in. And let's have a look at where the cobalt violet is on this. Well, it's coming into these petals in each inner edge. We're leaving the cools where we need them. And in some places it's stronger than others, so it's a little bit stronger into that petal. This is a very strong one. And I'm just going to Lays out all over that, just inside it there, and then just tickle it out. Make it a little stronger in a moment. Now, why I wanted it dry is because if I want hard edges. And I want wet on dry. I'm not going to need any masking fluid for the particular painting, just doing it with wet into wet, 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 wet next to wet and um, blending and using glazes. So I just subtly, carefully blending those colours down. Now we go to the other one. This is a violet pink, this cobalt violet. You can see how I can just come back when the paint's dried a bit and come into it. A little bit thinner just in the 
inner edges of these petals here. And we'll just give that a slight glazing. Just take it down a fraction. And come back in there again in a moment. Soften those edges a bit. And I need to do the rest of the painting there now. Right, that's the cobalt violet on all of the flowers. Now we need to go back in and start dropping in some warmer colour, which in this case is going to be the rose. So we've gone from our cobalt violet here. I'm going to come across to a still a cool warm, but warmer than we've been using. So it is very bright reds later for the koi. So we've got to keep comparing these colours one to another. And I want to uh, start to work in slightly redder tints around here now. Just blend them out. You see how much warmer this is than the cobalt violet that we put on a little bit earlier. Right, there's our warmer pinks. Now we're going to go back to the purples. Except on all those lilies now with those warmer pinks. Now back into those flowers again and let's look at a little bit of purple. So I'm coming across to here now, my mauve purple, which is a lot cooler. And we'll just look at how we can get the, uh, the deeper, cooler colours into here. Fill these edges a bit more. I'm now coming down and working in and around the joints between the petals a bit more now. I should go on and do the others. Before I do, I'm going to come back to a cool blue. I'm going to come back now to my cerulean, in fact. Just a little bit cooler. It's a little fraction warmer than that turquoise. I'll just come in with a little bit more cool into some of these lily leaves where the shadows are. So we've used the turquoise earlier. Now I'm using a little bit of cerulean just to pick out these shadows just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going back to the centre of the lilies. I want to go to this area. I'm going to use my Orionin again. Quite strong. And paint in this yellow in the centres. Right down through into there. But while that's wet, we'll take a darker yellow. Take some raw sienna. Just drop those in and they'll spread just slightly. So we don't want it too wet or they'll spread too far and we'll lose it completely. And then stronger again, a little bit of cadmium. Cadmium orange, get that really thin. And darker still, a little tiny bit of the burnt sienna, just in the centres and amongst it here. Give that lily that depth. It's a little bit of cobalt blue. And we'll go darker and cooler still because I really do want these petals to look a lot lighter. And the only way I'm going to get that to happen is by making the things around them a little bit darker, isn't it? So we'll just bring them out a bit more. Cooler blues already. So now I want to come in with a stronger, slightly warmer, darker. Blues, just a little bit more shadow here. And that will make sure that they shine out when I come to the dark colours around them. The lily is established, I'm going to go back to my oval mop because I want to start working on these larger areas of the lilies. And again, I've got to start with my lightest colours. And on there we've got both the cobalt violet shining in places on the leaves, so I'm going to do a lot of wet into wet on this. Look at where the violet's shining. That's one of my lightest colours around in there. We know that the paint's going to dry lighter. The watercolour always dry lighter, always dries it lighter than when we put it on. So although this might seem dark now, even the water making the paper go down a tone. So I'm going to want this purple going on. It's a very light move right the way through here for some of the glazes. Then I can start to work in some of the very pale yellows. Can I use my Oriolan yellow at the moment? 
to work in the grasses and background colours here. With little tiny strokes at the moment just to get a feeling of these lighter grasses and rushes. And then we'll start to look at the lilies themselves and whether they've got lighter areas or shining. might be a bit more detailed in a moment, we just want to get the effective light for now. If we start loose we can tighten up gradually. If I, if I just get the effects of light in now, I can come back and work up the, the water and so on later. There we go, that's our first washes. While that's drying I come back in with some cooler colours. I'm going to take my cerulean now, come back up and here start looking at these lily pads. Still slightly wet into wet but we're getting, it's just at the, at the borderline isn't it, but sort of in some places it's slightly wet and in others it's, it's just giving a slightly harder edge. Okay, what's all after? It's going to be a very dark pine there later but at the moment I'm just Finding these warms and cool. And this same cerulean blue is coming into the water as well. It's quite strong in places in these leaves. Remember back here we've got all these grasses too, so I've got to come back into there and I've also got to just start playing with tinting in these cools and texture some of the grasses back there just to give this feeling of them mistily coming in. Now let's really start to play with some of these blues and start to really get a feeling of water. Bit darker around the fish. I'm building up these colours now. A little bit of dry brush work now just to find a bit more texture around that fish. The paper and before we start to leave all little bits of ripples and so on. And there was our basic glazes again. We need to let dry again. As we gradually build this up. Right, now it's time to start working up our greens. We want fairly warm greens going over these at the moment, so I'm going to use some sap green. And uh, build this up in the background with the sap green. Nice warm green over the blues. Because we're going to bring in the darker colours at the end. Around all of this. And right down in over the leaves as well in places. We'll give it a glaze all the way across here. I can work on a slight tilt this time. Normally you know, I'm at an angle or working vertically for you, but in this case I wanted a just a very slight tilt with it dropping downwards. Just a mottled effect of the lily pads. the light shines across them. And the actual drawing is going to be brought out by the darks around them in a moment. To put some more aureolian yellow into this here to make this a lot yellower just where this lily pad is here. This is where we start to use even deeper blues in our greens. We're going to take the same sap green but add some ultramarine to it and uh, maybe start to get a sort of darker edge going here on these lilies. You can see how the lilies are now starting to stand out. 
And by playing between these warmer greens and cooler greens, I should be able to get some quite nice effects of the lily pads coming in behind effects of light like this look. So now I'm going to start adding a bit more cobalt blue to this. What I want to do is get a little bit of wet into wet here as well going on. So we get a variety of shapes and greens. I'm just starting to pick out some of these lighter lily leaves now then. And varying the, the greens with the blues as I go along so that we get a don't get a uniform edge. Now I could have used masking fluid here because these grasses, it means I could have gone back and brought out some of these lighter um, flecks of grass which would have been rather rather nice. As it is, I've just got to put the darks in as best I can here and just get the effect of the grass. Gradually building up these shapes of the leaves and the glazes, the darks and the lights in between. Can we look at the blues in there? Putting some of the cobalt blue back in. There are some beautiful blues in here amongst these greens. I'm just starting to use a bit of pure ultramarine now with the cobalt. Really start to push some of these darker shadows and play the pinks against these blues. And this is the beauty of using glazes. Because now I'm using this colour one over another using the transparency of watercolour to get the effects I want. Right, still working on the lily pads and we're going darker now. So I'm going to take the uh, ultramarine and add some burnt sienna to it to go darker. Really start to make these darks around the And the same, of course, they will have to be broken into these little bits of grasses and things in the background. I'm going to start adding a little bit of Prussian into it now to make it even darker. And a little bit more warmth, especially into the foreground. And of course, the darker I go behind this lily, the brighter the lily is going to look. You can see the amount of burnt sienna I'm now starting to use. I'm actually going to start using a bit of purple too. Because I want some really nice mauves and things going on in here as well as these deeper blues. I'll go back with the green and drop it in again. So you're still using a fairly large brush. I'm going to start coming down into the water. I don't know what my really lovely deep blue greens. So I'm still using the sap green and uh, a bit of ultramarine. And by carefully glazing this in, thinning it down into the background. Should be able to get the effect of the fish. And the prickles as they come around into the fish here. And just glaze these in with ever increasing coats of the green. Using a bit of water just to thin it down. Building it up from darks to my light store darks. I'll need to come in with a smaller brush in a minute, but this is just a, to see how much I can do with a bigger brush with a foundation to it anyway at least. Right, I'm going to let that dry off a bit now. Right, it's time to start coming down to the home of the detail now, so let's look at the fish. And uh, but the carp has some lovely golden yellows and of course that fish has some beautiful oranges on it. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of my cadmium yellow and uh, 
work that in across here, the whole of that bit. Really nice bright colour. Put red right across the whole thing in a moment there, so get that colour in. It's coming into the background here as well, just a bit thinly. And the same colour is happening on the coin over here. Beautiful yellows, golds, which work against that warmer colour that I put on earlier on, you see now. And we play the Aureolian yellow, this cooler yellow, into it as well, to make the warm seem even warmer. softening back these colours. Now into this here where we've had it that lovely strong yellow. We need to drop some really bright red. So it's exactly what I'll use, some bright red. cooler red as well, so we'll take some other red, a little bit of vermilion now, maybe need to use a little bit of white gouache just to find his whiskers again. This just needs darkening down here a little bit with the golds. Right, we're getting to the closing stages. I want a bit more green over it now, not just green but a more yellowy green so I'm going to add some more of the chrome to the sap which is going to give me a slightly opaque green that will allow me to give it a nice glaze of this slightly warmer green yellow which will bring it forward slightly before I start with the real details into here which I'm going to need yet there's the difference you see there. This sort of greeny colour that's rather nice that's going to come in and glaze over the fish underneath. Okay, we'll leave that again. Right, we're coming down to the final stage on this painting now. We're going to work on the ripples around the fish. Where I want to make things a little bit darker. So I'll take my some more round brush again, these ripples, and I want a very deep green, so I'm going to take some Prussian and add it into the yellow, my chrome yellow, Prussian and chrome yellow, give me a very, very deep blue green. And I need to really look at painting in these a lot more carefully the sharper edge against this dark and those ripples are coming right up to the fish and around up to the fins there quite dark and around the fish here and little, little fine lines just wiggling through there as well And it's these harder edges now that are going to make the other ones look a bit softer. Little details that hopefully will make it look as if the fish is swimming in transparent water. To get this translucence feeling. My larger brush. Same colours, this lovely deep blue we're using, a little touch of purple now, which really get dark underneath this fish here.
Right, and I think we need to tidy up on some colours. There's a bit of red here, I want it a little bit, little bit brighter. A bit of glazing need here and there, just want to soften with that calf's faces a bit there, blend in a bit more. And I may need to just work up the details a little more in places on uh, the flowers. And the lilies, here and there. And little bubbles, I'll just drop in. This paper is tending to really suck the paint in, so I'm having to work quite hard to blend things. I just want to get this final feeling of the ripples just coming over the surface of the fish, that's all. Now I want to go back with a little bit of white, I just put some little white areas in here and there for bubbles. So I'm going to take a small amount of white gouache. Right, I'm just going to put a little bit of white gouache into my palette and uh, use that almost neat. Put a few little white spots back in to sparkle. So I didn't use masking fluid originally. I wanted to keep these little bubbles and things, that would have been an idea. So I'm mixing with this up to a nice paste. There we go. And I want to just put in the beard of the to put in the moustache of the um, carp. The gouache is like a cross between watercolour and poster paint really, it's a bit thicker. So I just want to finish off a little beard, a little moustache on the carp here. And a few little bits of white touching up just to give a bit of surface to it. Here and there. A bit of white water, a few bubbles, little touches on the surface. And even on the lilies if we want to, we can put a little white back in. Which will hopefully just give us a little sparkle and surface of water. And there we are, we'll see how that looks in a mount.